Hello, welcome to another video from of New X looking at Chinese ramen in the past week and let's get right into it. First on January the 30th, we've had an airdrop drama on Tencent. It is a period comedy drama called Xi Jue Chang Le Cheng, The Happy Seven in Chang'an, and it's led by Ma Tianyu and Bu Guanjing. It really is one of those dramas that hasn't said anything about its airing prior to its airing, it just showed up. I haven't had time to check it out, only watch the trailer. There are a couple of things I've noticed. First is I almost couldn't recognize Bu Guanjing. She's an actress that I really like. I think she's very good at acting. She's been in so many different dramas, but she often gets criticized for looking not pretty or young enough for her age. Over the last couple of years, she's done so much work to herself. Actually really well done. Often you see stars do the wrong thing and make them look worse than before, but she really did make herself look better in terms of more fitting for the general public's aesthetics about what constitutes a pretty Asian girl. She's looking more and more pretty, but less and less recognizable. So that's a problem because recognizability, I'd argue, is more important for an actor than being conventionally pretty. Anyway, also she has this weird wig in this drama that has this weird hairline that rarely happens to female because usually for girls in period dramas, they use their own hair. And then also Ma Tianyu, He's been around for how many years now? It's a bit sad for me to see that his career really hasn't progressed at all. He's still pretty much mostly in those idol period dramas that are not doing much for your work portfolio as an actor. Overall, just based on the trailer, it looks like a very standard, normal, not high budget, only tailored to very small demographics. Period comedy idol drama, that type. And as if like airdropping is the most popular thing, one day after that, on the last day of January this year, 31st, we had a drama that also airdropped, ITE. And it is the pair drama that actually has finished making for quite a long time, but still hasn't aired until now. Amai Jun. English title is Fighting for Love. I don't know why they should name it that way. They really should change it. Amai Jun literally means Amai goes into the military or Amai goes into the army and Amai is the female lead's name. It's led by Zhang Tianai and then it's a story with her and three different guys. It's based on a novel, but it has been seriously rewritten. So you can almost ignore that it has any connection with its original IP. It's led by her and also Zhang Haowei, who's been around in drama land for years, but always playing supporting roles almost. And whenever he's the lead role, the drama kind of flops. He's not a bad actor and he's actually pretty good looking, but for some reason, hasn't happened for him. Then the other main guy is Wang Ruichang. From early days of Shang Shi Chong Fei Eternal Love, uh, the uh, crown prince, the male second, the often actually gets debated about why he's the male second, because he's a really good looking type of guy. He's been in a couple of other dramas where he plays lead. He's not bad at acting, but also still hasn't had a big breakthrough. And there's another guy in the drama who supposedly is the male third lead, but people are not happy about the fact that he is the male third and supposedly he eventually ends up with the female lead. Anyway, the story has started airing. They dumped out six episodes on day one and two episodes every day, updating it. 36 episodes in total. I'm actually up to episode eight already as I'm making this video. It's surprisingly better than I thought. It has a reasonable plot and reasonable characters with reasonable level of intelligence. Nobody is super stupid and there's very limited amount of artificial sweetener in terms of trying to cram everybody into the space to kiss each other too early on in the story. I will keep watching this drama and if it's worth talking about, I will be talking about it. Then February the 1st, we also have two dramas going live. Again, pretty much unannounced and just showed up. First is another 24 episodes ITE romantic content free drama that um, just by the title and the casting and even the trailer, you know, it's yet another this type of drama, not so different from say what we've just had on Yoku and Mango with Chen Xingxu. So this one is called Du Yi Yu Er De Ta. So that's playing with the Chinese word Du Yi Wu Er. English title is a lot more straightforward, My Special Girl. It's led by Zhang Yunlong and Song Yi Ren. I have no idea they actually work together. I am so behind Chinese drama land news, even though I do it every week. And supposedly it's a simple story of a guy who owns an entrepreneur company, yeah, like all the male lead in contemporary dramas these days, played by Zhang Yunlong, who um, gets an intern into his company, played by Song Yiren, who actually wanted to be a singer on like live streaming, but her parents really are against it. And she is actually from preschool education major. So that's a really weird sort of um, mix and match of major and career and hobbies and how that's going to work out. I'll try my best to get to it. I 
am a little bit curious to see Zhang Yunlong and Song Yiren pairing up. The other just shown up drama is from Mango Television, 40 episodes contemporary drama. And this is one of those clearly targeted at a wider demographic family drama called Huan Le Jia Zhang Qun, not having an official English title, literally meaning a happy group chat of parents. Group chats is a thing these days in China if you have kids in school. You are forced to get into a WeChat group, your kid's class group with all the parents and their teachers. And it's a nightmare for most parents because they have to actually reply to teachers' requests of doing this and that all the time and um, often just induce more stress than good. It's led by mid-age range, very solid and have been around for many years actors such as Zhang Jiayi. Chen Hao, potentially a very Ji Fei Go Tiao drama, chicken fly dog bite family drama. So these are the dramas that pretty much are all dropped out of nowhere and happened during this week in Chinese drama land. And then we have more confirmed news of the week leading up to Chinese New Year. On February the 6th, two dramas will be going live. One is the Da Tang Di Gong An on Yoku, Judge This Mystery, the case breaking drama based on the Dutch writers novel, its first season, first 32 episodes, I will definitely check it out. That's an exciting day because also on the day on Aichi, the drama Nan Lai Bei Wang will show up. They've released a new trailer this week and Aichi definitely is betting its money to make Nan Lai Bei Wang, the 70s train police drama with Bai Jingting and many other people to be this year's Kuang Biao knockout. Because last year it was also around Chinese New Year, that knockout came out and that became the hottest drama at the beginning and pretty much throughout the whole year in Chinese drama land. Let's see if ITE this time can repeat that. Moving on, let's talk about dramas that have wrapped during this week. So these people can go home and have Chinese New Year holiday. First is a 40 episode drama on Aichi that I've mentioned when they started shooting. It's very low key. Even at this point when they've wrapped, they've only released one type of video showing the process of the working. I feel this is another heavy money bet and when Aichi put it out, they want to get a lot of good reviews. <laughs> type of drama, Guo Bao Yao Shi. Not having an official English title literally means national treasure and its glory shines on, on the world, like whatever you want to translate that. It's talking about archaeology, talking about artifacts, protection and against illegal tomb excavation and all that story. And it's a full on proper actor cast, I'd say, led by Bai Bifan, Xin Bai Qing, Wang He Run. Fu Da Long. Clearly, it's a mix of older, more established generation of actors and younger, but can come up quite fast actors. The next one that has wrapped is from Yoku. And it's also one of the dramas on my Outlook of 2024 list. They started shooting around like November and October last year and didn't finish until now. The Qingming Shanghe Tu Mima. Riverside Scenery at Qingming Festival Code. Like that's the literal translation. But when the drama actually comes out, when it finishes post-production, they may change it because it's a mouthful. They may want to condense that down. And that's the drama led by Bai Bai He and Zhang Songwen as the two leads. Pairing drama set in Song Dynasty, case breaking. It also involves other actors that I'm definitely watching this drama for when it airs, such as Zhang Yao, Zhou Yiwei, Xia Meng. And upon wrapping shooting of this drama, they've released a set of production shots and they all look really good. And Zhang Yao looks really good because I really like him in Love in Between. It's a period drama he's done quite a few years ago. Ever since then, he hasn't done any really good period dramas or any good contemporary dramas for that matter. And his BL drama is buried with all the other BL dramas these days. So I'd be really happy to see him in a Song Dynasty period drama that seems to have really good research of Song costumes. We also have the, also I've mentioned before, contemporary drama on Mango Television, 40 episodes created by Zheng Wu Yangguang. Xiao Xiang Ren Jia finished shooting this week. The Romance in the Alley, another story that will talk about multiple families living in the same alley from the 80s, 90s up to now type of generation multiple story. It is directed by Zhang Kaizhou, who is this director who is, uh, you know, like hit and miss. Most of the time to me, he's a miss, but he's not too bad. Even when he misses, he doesn't miss too terribly. And it's led by this crazy ensemble cast of a lot of major <laughs> weight drama land people. Yan Ni, Li Guangjie, Guo Xiaodong, Jiang Xin, Fan Cheng Cheng, Wang An Yu, Guan Xiaotong. So from the parents' generation to the kids' generation, they're all kind of filled up with names that I am 
quite interested in. And they've all been in, particularly young actors, dramas that I like and dramas I don't understand. And they've all done really good work, but also really terrible work. It's gonna be really interesting to see this combination of well-established older actors mixed with very volatile younger actors, mixed with this sometimes good, sometimes quite director plus Zhong Yangguang and Mango Television. Then we have two dramas that have started shooting. It's weird to start shooting now because you're gonna have that weird week schedule that will make it awkward to force people to work. But then when people are working, they probably are not in the mood to work. <laughs> <laughs> These two are first a Yoku parody drama called Feng Huang Tai Shang. Right now on drama list, English title is Phoenix Stage. I don't think they're gonna keep the title when they actually ended up airing it. But anyway, right now it's called that based on existing IP and it's led by Ren Jialun and Peng Xiaoran. And if you want to know more about what the story is, its original novel's title is My Empress. I think that kind of completely tells you what the story is about. They just released the poster of the two leads, looking like a very standard, normal pair drama, and even the two leads look like what they look like in other dramas they've done before. So I'll just keep my expectation very neutral at this point of time. The other drama that has started shooting during this week is also from Yoku and it's very low-key. You can't even find it on drama list, but they did start shooting. It's a contemporary drama. Jingguan Lü Jie Yi Ke. That's a little bit mouthful, but basically it means uh, one division of the custom at this border place. And it's actually a contemporary drama about people who work at border control and custom. The English title is Gimlet Eyes. And so just by the title, it kind of is telling you that these people are working as the eyes and the detectors and the x-rays of things that goes through the border. It's gonna be led by Huang Yao and Jing Chao. Huang Yao, I like her as an actress. She's the type of actress who's not high profile, but she's been in almost exclusively very proper and serious dramas. And Jing Chao, when he's picked for the right role, it actually works really well, but often he's casted for roles that really do, don't suit him and he's not had the best career yet so far. And I'm curious to see how this is gonna turn out, their collaboration and the contemporary drama of a particular profession that's I don't think ever been exclusively depicted in any Chinese contemporary dramas. Finally, to wrap up today's <laughs> video, I'm already laughing because it happened literally during my sleep last night. Before I went to sleep, it hasn't happened. When I woke this morning, I saw this news every on my feet and I laughed so much. Basically, there is a BL drama that was made quite a few years ago and hasn't come out, like all the BL dramas. Zhi Ming You Xi is based on a novel called Wan Hua Tong and it's a clear BL drama. The platform was Ai Qi and they casted Huang Junjie and Xia Zhiguang. These two guys have been in multiple other stuff ever since then and if you watch a lot of Chinese dramas, you probably have an impression of who they are. Neither of them are considered to be good actors, very young and not really coming from professionals or trained actor background. During my sleep, this drama got chopped up by ITE to every episode only 20 minutes and dumped it all on their platform in one go without telling anybody. There's no promotion, no announcement, but people still found it. And they realized this is the BL drama that's been refrigerated for years. And everybody got, oh my God, is ITE like trying out like Guang Yun and Yu Ku did last year. But within the time that I was asleep, it went live and then it got pulled down and it got everybody super confused about what the heck is going on. Now, with the mount that they released, technically if you're fast and you have multiple people doing the taking it down from the website thing, you may be able to actually get the whole thing down and put it on internet, pirated copy out there. I'm not so interested in the story to start with, not interested in these two actors either because BL drama is really hard to do well. You have to be good actors to pull it off and you actually have to know what type of acting you need to be doing. You're not actually playing realistic gay people. You're playing imagined version of mm, yeah, that, that whole complicated psychological thing on the back end. And if you're not clever and experienced enough actor, you actually easily make a mess. Based on the leaked out footages I see on the internet, it's embarrassing in terms of the acting. And they stole the most important line from a word of honor, which is there's light on you and I want to grab it and take a look. 
Every BL drama has a classic line. For example, in Guardian, you would say, "I've caught it." In Word of Honor, is 你身上有光，我抓来看看 Everybody knows that line, right? If you've been through 2021, and this drama shamelessly took it completely. That part of the video is online. I've watched it, and I'm like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" Just because you're another BL doesn't qualify you for stealing literally the line from another BL drama. What the heck are you thinking? Just because of that, I'm like, "Oh, okay." Now I can make fun with other people. Together on this drama for being living on the internet for like what three four hours and disappears again. It's a good thing that this drama is buried now. And please don't show up again. I don't want to see it. It's it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Okay. And as for the future of BL drama land, right now you really don't know what the heck is going on. And everybody now is just looking at the whole situation as a joke anyway. For the well-beings of most of the actors who were involved in those dead projects, I honestly think maybe it should just be kept in the fridge for like the next two decades. When they get to like 50 years old, right, and then old enough to be grandfathers or parents, and nobody care about like what you've done when you're younger, release those dramas then. It would actually probably give them a second wave of popularity, and then nobody would really have a problem with it. Maybe that's the best time to do that for them. For them. For us, I mean, I. A reason for you to stay healthy: eat well, exercise, read into nutrition, like the latest news about what is good for you and not, and do all the tests you need, and even DNA ones, because I've done, and it's very revealing about who you are. Really, stay alive and stay well, so that you can live to 120 at least. And all the dramas that <laughs> are not airing now, you have high, high possibility of seeing them later. Thank you for watching Up New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.